What would you be willing to do to save your family? Would you allow yourself to become the very thing you tried to fight against in the first place for what you see as the greater good? Papers, Please sets out to ask us these very questions. In the game, you play as an immigrations officer for a fictional dystopian Eastern Bloc adjacent country called Arstotska. This fake country is bordering directly with many opposing nations, and as such, you as a player play a vital role in making sure that no one gets in who shouldn't. This means that you're only paid based on passports that you correctly allow in or deny. And considering that in-game you have a starving and poor family back home, including some very young children, every little ounce of money you can get counts for keeping everyone alive. And the tension in the game is what it is most known for. There are many people forging fake passports or giving sob stories about why they should get in. And only by denying entry to these starving and desperate families can you feed your very own. On top of this too, further into the game, some shady characters like mob members or corrupt politicians come to you offering large sums of money in order to illegally let people through, meaning by doing the quote unquote wrong thing, you can guarantee your family another day of food and safety. It's a game that pushes at the very core of what it means to protect those you love, and turning away helpless families from borders in order to save your own is a panic-inducing situation. Maybe the most poignant of all the moments in the game, though, comes from a man named Georgie. You first meet Georgie as a young lad trying to find entry into your country with a comically forged passport, full of scribbles and childlike drawings. It's a good laugh for an otherwise dire situation, and any player trying to make the obvious choice denies Georgie entry and sends him along his way with a wink and a smile. And time and time again, Georgie comes back with progressively more sophisticated passports, yet each time still having faults that make it obviously forged, meaning with each arrival, just as quickly as Georgie comes, you send him away again. But one day he comes to you with what seems to be a perfect passport. No errors, no scribbles, and it looks like everything checks out. And while your intuition tells you it certainly is a forgery still, there's nothing you can do to be sure, and by letting him in you almost get a sense of relief that he finally figured it out. Where this situation becomes truly interesting though is towards the end of the game, when the country you live in suddenly looks to be on the brink of war with its neighbors, meaning you and your family could be in big danger. But not only that, the government has started confiscating citizen passports in order to force people to stay and fight, meaning your family would surely die. And it's at this moment that you can now reach out to Georgie and ask him to help you forge a new identification in order for you and your family to escape. The irony of it all is that over the entire span of the game, you were tasked with catching liars, cheaters, and apparently bad people, many of whom were only lying in order to save themselves from a bad situation. But in the end, you become the very thing you tried to fight against, a man and his family forging passports in order to try and get into another country. Before where you rejected so many others in order to help your own family, now you must pray that no one rejects you in order for your family to survive. It's one of the most powerful twists in an otherwise very laid back and some would say boring games that really puts into perspective just how important, well, perspective is. Because what Papers, Please makes us think about is how everyone has their reasons. Before when you denied people you wish you could help, it was because you needed to help those you loved first. And then when you went against everything you originally signed up to protect, it was to protect yourself and those you loved. We as humans tend to be selfish creatures, especially in situations of immediate need. During times of struggle, turmoil, or confusion, we often turn to lying, cheating, or a distinct lack of empathy in order to satiate our needs. But too often too, when we become these things, we hurt others in the process. And as we have all been told probably too many times in our lives, life isn't fair. And many times prosperity for one must come at the expense of another. And this point of humanity is seen in no better situations than countries on the brink of catastrophe, where everyday people around you are suffering. So the question then becomes, should you screw over those you don't know in order to protect the ones you love? If you have to deny starving family food in order to feed your own, would that be a sacrifice worth making at the expense of your soul? Or would it simply make you a monster? The same one that had you been in the starving family's position, you would have felt rage and vitriol for. When life is calm, it's easy to be a good person. It's easy to give to others, and even more help them with whatever they need. But it's only when we are truly met with extreme hardship that we can see the character that we have inside. No one knows their strengths until they are tested, and no one knows their morality until they're in a world with none. So if Papers, Please teaches us anything, it's to always question not only your own reality, but the reality of those around you. Oftentimes when people are doing things you would find heinous or monstrous, it may be because a monster is all they have left within them to survive. 
If you had to defend your family, would you steal? Would you lie? Would you give up all those moral studies you learned about in your life? Would you kill? For those of you who answered that question just now in your head, without ever actually being in a life or death situation, you don't know. And that's what makes it scary, but also beautiful. Because truly, if there is one thing I took away from Papers, Please, it's that while we cannot always control what will happen to us, or even those we love, what we can control is how we react to it. And by remembering to always try our best to understand others and their struggles and thoughts alike, we can become people with much more understanding, and hopefully, more love.